Hi, Karibu Sana. This is the last conversation of the day at Y254 channel at Brian Sako 101 on the hashtag, which is why in the morning. And as always, get interactive. will be sampling part of your feedback to us the tail end of the conversation. And mine is at Brian Sako 101, and I'm Sako still. All right, so the conversation of today is all about the world of events. What exactly does it take to be there? And you're being joined live in studio by Joel Momo, who's a professional MC. He's going to tell us what exactly it takes to be in that space and if at all there's networking and uh, and what pro maybe do you need to study for it before you professionally begin. And sometimes, you know, getting the gigs, good Lord. You know, we've seen uh, big MCs like uh, the likes of uh, uh, Dr. Fuenike and the rest uh, MCing at these big events. You know, Juzi Alisebon Takakui, QMC, the ninth wedding of Akothe. So what exactly does it take to actually rise to such a level of MCing where you're making up to 100 to 250,000 or even more, especially when it comes to matters, events, MCing? And Karibu Sana Joel. Uh, so you, you, you can briefly tell us, like, uh, how was the journey of you transitioning to MCing? Because uh, you mentioned to me before we came off air that you studied journalism and what pushed you to, to us that trajectory in that industry? Right. Um, so like I was telling you before we went on air, um, I've, I've studied journalism in Leicester, um, actually still studying there. So when I got to Leicester, there, was, there were MCs, but then they were about to finish school. The MCs that were currently in that school, they were about to graduate. So I noticed there would be a niche. Um, so and that's how I began. I, I, I was like, this is something I could do because I was doing poetry before, so I was used to stage, so sick on a stage, right? So um, I began and seeing the small, small events here and there. I began, um, you know, doing what work on a kind events, G class, Ghani, I go and see for them. Uh, so that's pretty much how I transitioned from, um, from that to MCing. Yeah, yeah, which year was this? Second year, yeah, somewhere around second year. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, 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 and what were you doing in between that before you finally settled that I'm going to do it professionally? Because you're saying you saw a niche there. Yeah. Is there something that you're doing to ask that before? Am I is it because journalism, you talk and then you can still talk while MCing? And first of all, maybe you can define what is MCing for anybody who has no idea what that means. Uh, there's always mentioning, oh, we need an MC, we need yeah, this, yeah. we need an MC, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Who is that person? Well, um, for me, I think uh, an MC is someone who is at an event to coordinate and ensure everything runs smoothly. Um, but we, we have different types of MCs because how you MC a wedding is not the same way you will MC a corporate dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, how you MC a wedding is not the same way you're going to MC, uh, let's say, um, a luncheon or something. Like, it, it's different. So basically, an MC is someone who is there to make sure you run the program smoothly and people are entertained. Now, that's where, uh, that's where the difference comes in because how you will entertain people is not the same way I'll entertain people. Mm -hmm. I might have a different way of entertaining people, and you might have a different way of entertaining people. That's why you see, we have so many MCs, and kila mtu koko bagi yake. Who wana iti wazake, who wana iti wazake, because we are different. Yeah. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, for the question you asked earlier, how did, what was I doing before then? Like I told you, I was doing poetry. I've tried a lot of things. I've done poetry, I've done acting. So, my journey into this was not hard, because seen a stage fright. I'm used to, to stages. I'm used to audiences. I'm used to talking. Again, mm -hmm. I'm doing journalism. I mean, this is something I've been doing for, for some time. So, And you said you're doing a master's at Daystar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can only imagine like the levels it takes, first degree, second, and then third, or now getting to a master's, or whatever the curriculum that in, it's in between. Yeah. So that's a, those are a lot of years spent in school. But yeah. then well, actually, not a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've been in Daystar for, uh, say, four years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the beauty about Daystar eh, this is free marketing. When you live, <laughs> you can you can do you can do like many units, um, uh, and then you can do tri semester, so you can yeah. finish. Uh, you can finish a degree in three years. Okay. Yeah. That's when you when you're an SSP self sponsored yes, student. Yes. 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 All right. Um, so when was the first gig? Your first gig, and how how did it happen? And there's a place where you mentioned there's a difference between I'm um, seeing a corporate dinner or event, yeah, and then a wedding. Uh, what is the difference? And also, when it was the first, 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 first one that you've had, yeah. was it successful or was it a failure? Let me tell you. Um, the first gig was a cultural 
uh, we have a culture cu cu culture week. So there was a cultural gala. So um, as it was approaching, I was like, my friends uh, were like, ah, bro, you can do this thing. So I was like, hey, bro, let me try it. So I went to the organizers. I'm like, I think I can do this thing. They were my friends, the organizers. So what happened is um, I was paid 500 for that gig. I remember very well. You had to be in Natasha Fair because it was happening in a 500 field. Kenya shillings? Yes. 500,000 no, no, Kenya shillings. 500 Kenyan shillings. Mm. Yes. It was happening in Athi River. So I think we're Natasha Fair. So right. the gig was quite successful. It's actually on YouTube. I was looking at it the other day and I was like, whoa. Mm. I can't even imagine this was my first gig because it was really successful. Which year was this? This was in 2019. Mm. Yes. Just before COVID. Yes. Or yes, pre COVID. Yes. Pre COVID. Pre COVID. That mm. was in 2019, um, mm. somewhere around January, Feb, somewhere around there. Yeah, I, I was looking at it the other day. I was like, I can't imagine this was my first gig. And now um, rising through, through and, and, and I feel like that's, that's the gig that set me into the space where I was getting booked for other gigs. And I was mm. starting to get confident about mm. it because I was like, eh, if I can do this, that means I can now do more, more, more and more of this. Yeah. yeah. So who booked you for it? And how did you get into it? Like I told you, I approached the organizers. It's a very amazing guy. A big shout out. I, I even texted him during his birthday. A big shout out to Nala Walter, I mean, for believing in me. Because I went to him. He had never seen me do anything. And he was like, okay, you can do it then. Okay. Yeah. And it's a big event. It's one of the biggest events in that school. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the industry. I really don't know how it feels to be in that space. Yeah. Um, Maybe, maybe also you can tell me the difference between being a moderator of, of like a conversation. Uh, uh, the one I've been in one was very serious, matters education. In, in, in. So yeah. what is the difference between a moderator, moderating people talking about a certain topic, yeah. and somebody standing in front with a mic and making people shout and scream? Yeah. I don't know, what's the difference? Well, uh, <laughs> there's not much of a difference. The difference comes in with how you engage the audience. Cause Let's say I'm moderating a session where people are seated. Um, I won't be telling people, oh, give it up for blah, 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 with oh, a big voice and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'll approach it differently. Uh, I can use icebreakers. I can use, um, I, I can use intellectual jokes, because there are jokes you can make in a very formal setting. There are jokes you can make in a very, un not very informal, but in, in another setting. So the difference between moderating really and now this other is, is basically um, how you engage the audience. Because when, when I also do mo moderating by the way, so when I'm moderating, uh, there's no way I'm going to uh, say, oh, should you give it up for blah, 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 with a big voice, blah, 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 and shouting in the mic and blah, blah, blah. But when I am doing a wedding, then I'll have to shout. I'll have to say, oh, blah, 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 we'll have to dance. and. The same, the same way you can't, when I'm moderating, you won't have people dancing all over sweating. But this, when you're doing a wedding, they'll have to dance, they'll have to sweat and, 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 and all that and all that. So I feel like the difference between moderating and this other side is really uh, just how you engage the audience. All right. Is it an industry that anybody who's watching can venture into? Or maybe if they want to find out, before you mention the company. Yes. Is it, is it an industry that's open to people? like just the normal people or the Monainchi? And maybe what are some of the skills that are needed for a person to be a professional MC? I don't know if you're a professional MC because I also don't know what professional means. <laughs> I don't know. Nowadays, everybody's a professional yeah, coach, yeah. professional pastor, this, that. Yeah. I don't know. Is there like training that pro that's required for you to be like a certified one? Well, um, I, I wouldn't say there's really uh, training for that because it's, it's a skill. It's a skill you can learn. Number one, it's a skill if you put in the work. And Learn from the school? Or no, 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 not from school. Okay. In school, they won't teach you these things. But mm. you can learn from other individuals who are doing, who are doing that. Like, mm. um, you can get mentors who are mm. already in the industry who are doing that. For you, do you have some? Yes, yes, yes. Who are they? Uh, well, I have an MC called uh, MC Ken. Mm. Does an amazing work. MC Tony does an amazing work. And now the big names I also, Dr. Afueneke is my friend. He's been mentoring mm. me for some time as well. The one who said he's about to MC a contest nine, yes. ninth <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, uh, good money. Mm. Uh, and also, okay. uh, Chris Kiva was actually doing classes a while ago for MCing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether they're still going on, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a skill you can learn. But mm. really, if you're not, um, 
how do I put this? If you're not, if it's not something you're skilled, mm -hmm. it's, some, it's a skill you can learn, but you need a skill before you go learn the skill. All right, so that. what is the personality of, the, of, a, of an MC, maybe, uh, generally? Um, Either me, male or female? Well, let me, let me answer for myself, because I've seen, I'm, I'm an extrovert, and that works for me, because, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm talking, but I've, I've seen MCs who are very different people when they're off stage, have mm. a friend, Bro, when, when he's on stage, he's a very different person. When he's off stage, he's an introvert. You might mm. even not notice him. He's very quiet, okay. doesn't really need a lot, but when he's on stage, mm -hmm. hey, that's amazing. Yeah. Right. So for me, I'm an extrovert. I talk to people a lot. I interact with people a lot. Um, yeah. Right. So uh, are there like skills you had to learn? Because uh, definitely you're interacting and engaging. And... Uh, I don't know how it feels to be at a wedding and then a funeral and then a corporate dinner. You yeah. can tell us. Yeah. But you're meeting different minds, different people. Yeah. Uh, how do you channel yourself into that? Are there skills that you learn to yourself that make you to do that seamlessly? Yes. Um, so f f for me, uh, first of all, um, when I was coming to Nairobi, I I've, not, I'm not, I've, I've, not been, I've not grown in Nairobi. So I had some few language, um, like H, meaning Kamba, to not struggle mm -hmm. in H and 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 eh, yeah, we struggled somewhat. So just the putting in the <laughs> I don't know what, what it means, but it's a it's a familiar sound with Wakamba. <laughs> yeah. So just putting in the work and ensuring that because because a client would know. So yeah. how did you do away with those parts? Well, it's practicing, practicing. I would call my brother. I uh, would sit down and go over the words over and over again, like the words I'm struggling. Like let's say I do a gig, I'll know the words I struggled with. I actually used to write them on my phone. Hey, aponime, aponime choma. Mm. Then I go home, I redo them, redo them. And I make sure, even now, I make sure in every two days, I learn three new words I didn't know. In which language? Kikuyu? No, 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 in oh. English. Oh, yeah, two okay. words I don't know. All right. Every okay. two weeks. So that's how you like killed that part here, arrows, arrows, and yes, H. yes. So with time, well, I've not I like completely killed it because I mean it's inbuilt, but I've managed to, like, I can have a conversation without mm. you noticing I'm a camber. Mm. All right, perfect. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, you have a company, by the way. You can tell us uh, when did it start functioning professionally? Have you hired people? Is it a man solo project? You're riding solo for now. And what was the vision of that company, and what is the name as well? Yes. The name of the company is Mush Events Limited. We have some am amazing merchandise, Mush Events Limited. Um, why I started this company? This company actually turned a uh, year old uh, in August uh, 23rd. Yes, a year old. Uh, why I started this company? So I it was started in 2020 or 2021? 2022. Oh, last year? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, last year, August 23rd. So why, why I started this company is, first of all, I was doing MCing before that, like I'd mentioned. So I realized um, most clients would ask me, I would go and tell clients, eh, I'm an MC, I would like to, like I would write proposals and all that and all that. They'd be like, can you also provide sound? I'm like, no, but, so the client already has a perception. They're like, hey, me not a to an a package because events are stressful. Mm -hmm. Events are stressful. And I think I need to stress this. Hey, running an event is not a joke. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't attack someone who would come and give them the whole package. I'll give you sound. I'll give you tents. I'll give you chairs. I'll get you a DJ. I'll get you a good MC. I'll sort out your only thing. The only thing you need to do is just give me the budget. I'll work on everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, that's that's how I was like, ah, maybe I can I, I, I can start doing this. So how I started is uh, I knew friends who had these things. Mm -hmm. So I was like, uh, when I was approaching clients now, I was like, hey, my name is this, I offer sound, blah, blah, blah. I don't have sound. I, I have no idea. So, so when you say sound, uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Sound is a PA system, yeah. a band, uh -huh. uh, the... A mic, speakers, uh, yeah. band, these of Tuzote. Because that's a full throttle equip equipment. Yes, yes. It's full throttle equipment and, and it costs millions. Yes. Where did you get the money to buy all this equipment now that you're offering all of them? Yes. And you're also a DJ. 
you're also a journalist, you're also the MC, you're also on this company, and you have not employed people. Like, how are you magically operating this? Well, I'm not a DJ, just to clarify. I you're have not DJ. a DJ? No, 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 I'm, I have Oh, DJ. you offer DJing yes, services? Yes, 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 yes. All right, okay. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. how I manage, uh, first of all, let me answer the first question. How do you get these things? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't wake up and buy all of them. So the first, um, uh, I started in August, by December, I had accumulated uh, quite quite some money. I had gigs that year. Immediately I started, I had a lot of gigs. So by December, I had accumulated quite some money. So I started buying monitors. Like I didn't buy, at a size at it, and I I have all of it. No, 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 no. You buy as you continue. So I bought monitors. I bought base, base. I bought, uh, like, uh, as you continue, as I make money, I make money as I buy more. So let's say at that time, I would now when I have monitors and I need base, I'll get my monitors mm -hmm. and I hire base. So mm -hmm. that way, I've not incurred a lot of cost hiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll I'll have money to for for for, for the company. So, so by event, how much do you use to hire or just do this whole transaction from to from you to the client and then back? For for now now. Mm. Even no, the I'm recent one. I don't know how many events so far you've done. How many? Have I have you done? done a lot of events. I think more Approximately than for this year, how many? 150. That's a lot. That means you've made a lot of money out of that. Yeah. Uh, so h per event, how much? Uh, it depends because I don't charge the same for all uh, events because there's a client who only needs two monitors because the mm. event is 50 people. Mm -hmm. There's another client who has 700 people. You mm. need uh, a lot of uh, equipment for that. So it depends, but uh, roughly, uh, I would say 50 Gs. Mm -hmm. yes. That's like the biggest. No, 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 no. The biggest, the biggest event I've done for sound alone, mm -hmm. sound alone was 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was a wedding or a funeral? It was a wedding. It was a wedding. Okay. Uh, which is happening at Moven Peak. All right. Yes. So maybe what is the right card? Because uh, the the ones we've seen post on social media, well, they post right card. Or some, <laughs> even just me taking a photo with your bride or with your uh, wife, whoever in that event, yeah. I'm charging two hundred thousand. Yeah. Do you have a red card? Well, there, is also is it an important part of that business having a red card? Yes, yes, yes. It is an important mm. part because. Most clients will ask for the rate card. Mostly in MC, for sound, they will have to go the, the the technicalities of what they need and blah, blah, blah. But for MC, you must have a rate card. So mm -hmm. for me, it's between 30 to 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what services would you be offering if for that matter? For MC? Yeah. Just MC. Uh, coming and just dancing. Dancing, uh, ensuring the guests are entertained. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, basically that. All right. Uh, what of these people who come to uh, make, they, yes, they do crack jokes, but they're dressed, like, in short, they're comedians. Is that difference between being a comedian and an MC? I'm an MC, you have all these talents. You have, you have the comedy part in you, you have the MC part in you, you have the moderator, you have the dancer, you still have the DJ. Well, uh, I think we, we do have all, only that now, for you, you'll find MCs who the comedian part is higher than the rest. And you find another MC who their dancing part is higher than the, the other part. And another one who, like, we all have those two parts. Because again, you have to make people entertained. Like, where's the underpal and you're not even funny? Uh, you have to make some jokes. You have to. But it's something you learn. Uh, I, I wouldn't say I was very good at jokes at the beginning. But with time, you know when to say this joke, how to say this joke. So it's something you can learn in between uh, as you continue. Yeah. Right. And what about feedback? Because uh, for any business, there's always feedback. Yes. You know, and your interaction with the clients and yeah. what they say. So what was the most, uh, I say, most reputable feedback you got and one that was not as reputable? Right. Um, the most reputable feedback I got was from um, a client, FinTech. They were doing a dinner. Um, I was providing sound, DJ, MC, and stage stage for, 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 the, for the venue. Uh, the client sent me an email after two days. Oh my God, it was like two, two big paragraphs. And mm -hmm. they were com commending the way we did it professionally, the way we were very professional in how we handled the, the clients, the, how it was entertaining. Like it was, it was long, but it was very, 
it was very touchy. Well, I get feedback a lot from, I make sure I get feedback from every client, but mm. the way that took just their time to write a very long one, because Wengi Nakwanga, a short one, ah, you did an amazing job, Asante San, I hope to work with you again. And how do they write this? Is it in a text? Do you have an app or a website? Email, email, oh, email. Email, yeah, because okay. we do, they do the bookings via email, okay. so that's how they give their feedback via email too. And how do they get to know you? Am I you famous out there and they know you? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm actually not very famous. Well, b well the beauty about uh, events business is if, if you book me for an event to do for your sound, MC, blah, 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 and all that, you'll have other people coming to the event. Mm -hmm. And all along, I'm at some point, I'll make sure I mention that we have done this, we have done this, we have done, we are the guys who have done this, we have done this. So yeah. immediately after the event, I always get people saying, eh, now by the way, how much do you do for this? Can, let me have your card. I, I'll contact you. I have this. So, uh, you, you, so that's how you build a network. There's actually an event I did at Fred, Fred's Ranch um, at, like two months ago. The amount of gigs... Which Fred's Ranch? In, in Kajado. Oh, Fred's okay. Ranch. Uh, the one for oh, Machoka. Oh, the, oh, Ma Machoka, the journalist. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are, you are the, the guy who organized that whole event? No, no, they, they had an event. I uh -huh. provided sound, I was the MC, and I also provided the tents for the okay. event. Uh -huh. uh, the amount of gigs I got from that gig, eh, hey, crazy. I, like, I would get calls, hey, to look on air, Fred's Ranch, blah, blah, blah. Eh, hey, let's plan a meeting. Like, I got, like, 10 gigs from that, from that event. Mm -hmm. So that's how you build a network in the event industry, because... Again, uh, if you do a good job, that's why I, I usually emphasize on, because I have a team that I'm working with. I have yeah. a DJ, a set DJ, Mwenyanajua. If we have a gig today, that's mm -hmm. the DJ I'm calling, not unless we have many gigs, because there are days we do like three gigs, blah, 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 then I have to outsource others. So how many do you have in total, the, the number of staff that you work with? I have a DJ, uh -huh. I have two sound guys, and I have one other guy who, is, who helps with logistics. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many are those in total? Four, and then me. So we are five. Oh, ni yama boys peke boy child association. Boy nice. child association. Nice. Yeah, I like nice. working with yeah. them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, so what is likely to go right at an event, and what is likely to go south, and maybe also on that matter, um, what is uh, what usually goes wrong in an event? You're like, hey, kai ime ime happen manze. Definitely, that's a low blow. Right. I'm Ike and David, definitely this one is a win for me. I'm going to mm. get five star credit. Okay. Um, so uh, what, what, what might likely go wrong, um, let me start with MCing. What might likely go wrong as an MC is, um, well, the crowds at first, they are usually cold because they don't know you. They're like, when you know not want to see mama to pick him up off his street to him. What would go wrong is not managing to get them from Io Chini, because yeah. crowds mostly live in Alangas, Io Chini, to get them now to, yes, yeah, actually it's good. You, you love Kijini, you, you, you live in here, comments uh, mm -hmm. along. Like, he's actually good to see Mame, eh, blah, 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 and all that, and all that. So what yeah. might go wrong is not you finding a way, because we have different ages. Um, you'll, you'll find an event, you are too young, and I can to peer was there. So finding that niche to what at the same time when mm -hmm. we're from Chini to now starting to actually enjoy the event. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's one thing. Uh, what might go right is getting on stage and people liking you instantly. Mm -hmm. That's... Mimi najuanga personally, nikishanza event hapa. Ni kuenda kuenda, tunasonga, tunasonga. For sound, what might go wrong is una realize umebeba equipment, the wrong equipment. Yeah. When I realize umebeba the wrong equipment for that event, Ama, the client didn't give you the correct information about uh -huh. the event. There's an event the client told me, uh, we'll only have 50 people. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, we only need two monitors and blah, blah, blah. Tunafika pale, it was fully packed. So now you uh -huh. have to, uh, first of all, talk yeah. with the client. Do you have to the equipment? Yeah. Then now you have to go for the equipment and yeah. blah, blah, blah. So... So how do you also ferry? How do you ferry your equipment from your office where you're best to the event? Do you have a car and people that help you? Yes, yes, yes. We have okay. a van. Uh, you have a van? Yes. That's yours. Some no, it's no, a no, team no, no, van. No. It's a hired team. van. Yeah, yeah, a hired, hired van. van. Let me say a hired van. Okay, then it means you spend a lot of money hiring. Well, not, not a lot. if you Because most of... Now we're doing business to business. Let's say you also do the same thing I do. When mm -hmm. I come to you, 
uh, you won't charge me as a client. Mm -hmm. You'll charge me as a business yeah. associate. Mm -hmm. uh, so business to business works because, again, we're in the same industry to... Because even you, when you will have another gig and you'll need my, my, mm -hmm. my equipment, yeah. you'll, you'll need me to, uh, again, hire yeah. to you for, at a subsidized rate. So uh, not, a lot, not a lot of money. Uh, what is the difference between, you mentioned Chris Kiro, he's so big in that industry, yeah. and, and uh, Dr. Fuenik as well, and yeah. the rest yeah. of them, greats. So what is the difference between an event that Chris Kiro will organize and yours? I'm already, what is the bigger part about yours that will beat Chris Kiro's and Ogalbinos as well? Is it Ogalbino or Dr. Fuenik? Dr. Fuenik, Ogalbino too does events. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, uh, what are some of the things that will make yours outstanding than his? or he's outstanding than yours. In short, I'm talking about competition. Yeah. And how do you make yours shine the best? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so f f as of now, I, I would be lying if I say I would do a better event than Chris Kira. That guy has... Why not? You don't believe in yourself? I believe in myself, but there's something called experience. That guy has uh, <laughs> a lot of experience, number one. He has crazy equipment like equipments that cost millions that I don't have yet, not unless mm. I outsource from him. So mm. uh, sitting here and saying that I'll do a better event than Chris Kira would be lying. Two, but now here, here is what it, when, where, where, it, where it comes when it comes to competition. How do you beat competition? Because competition is out there. We have a lot of people who are MCs out there. Actually, competition is, is a must, like it should be part of your business. Yes, it's part. It should be Peter, people giving you sleepless nights so mm -hmm. that you become better. Yes. So who are they now that you're talking about it? Who are these people giving you sleepless nights in that space? Well, um, we have other events companies. I like. I'm not the only one. We have can you a, give them credit in, in the name of shouting them yes, out? Yes, uh, a big shout out to Epic Events, a big mm. shout out to eSounds, a big shout out to Henrique Sounds. Uh, those are, they are my friends, but we yeah. compete. Good competition. What about more sounds with more boys, sounds as well? Hey, more radio. sounds crazy. More sounds. Um, hey, we have other big names in the in the. We have Chef Iwe who started doing events. Mm -hmm. He's actually I think the one doing for Nairobi County. Mm -hmm. Big money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, what we make? So what is your your yours is Mosh Mosh Events Limited. Mosh is my name. Of Momo. Yes, from right. Momo. Yeah. Okay, get it, I get it, I mm. get it. Now, uh, I, I remember the story of Park and Chill. Initially, used to be started by DJ Piero McKenna, who used to be a, a host here still on Y in the morning, yeah. way, way back before yeah. he came in. Uh, coming up with such an event, do you also need to have maybe had a background of hosting events? Because uh, I've seen ratings of some events, mutually host and Ili flop, flop. Ili flop. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. you invested the money, you had the good people, but it was a work event, yeah. Yeah. a work event. Yeah. Um. Cool. So uh, one thing I've come to learn, uh, you can do everything. Like I can't stay, and that's where most event organizers go wrong. Like you want to take the event, and where we, for example, Mimi, my best is MC. Now I want to do every other thing. I want to do sound. I want to do. I want to do everything, like I want to ensure that Mimi don't even fanya kila kitu. No, um, you can do everything alone. Most of the big events, you need you need people with experience in that area. I need a guy who has done sound visuri. Yeah. Eh, don't even be. Eh, niaje kamu fanya sound ya event. I'll give you my equipments, blah blah blah. You do the sound. Ni ni tume mungine ni ambie niaje. You do this. You do this. But now, what most event organizers miss is, um, first of all, when you don't have people in your team who are competent enough. They're just mm -hmm. your friends. Yeah. Like when I'm here to ah, we come, 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 we might even spoil you on any. But you need people with experience in the different aspects of events. Because yeah. events, events is a very wide, wide, wide space. So yeah. you need people with experience in each and every category to produce a good event. So for, for example, Vilo Mesema, Pak and Chill, uh, so. the, the one for DJ Pierre. Mm. The thing is, um, the, and the ratings flopping, yeah, it could flop, see that it flop, but the uh, park and chill one at yes. carnival, yes, yes, yes. So, you need people, you need people who are experienced in so in short, it was sabotaged, yes. yes. Okay, so someone can sabotage an event, yes. How, what could happen in that sabotaging situation? Uh, well, a lot of things could happen. Uh, if it's a big event that's all on Twitter and blah, 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 people could sabotage it or from online trolls and all that. That's number one. Number two. But people are buying tickets to come to the event. Yes. So you're not meeting them off, off physically. 
You yes. met them at the event at the gate. Yes. Uh, entrance. But but there is online. I mean, uh, in this era of social media, what could go really uh, out easily? Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have to go. We are out of time. Uh, maybe what is the lesson you've learned and how is your relationship with your customers? Uh, what makes you to have that repeat relationship? Because I believe in businesses, most businesses, it's repeat clients. They come, they yes. tell another, yes. and it becomes a chain. Yes. And it creates the value chain even yes. in the eco in the eco business world. So how is your relationship with one and what is the skill that you've harvested before we exit? Well, I usually make sure that with each and every client I work with, I have, uh, I walk with you through the journey. And that's, that I think has made me stand out. Like, I'll not be the kind of guy when you may outsource to, na na kuja tu, even. No, I'll make sure I know the specifics. I walk with you through the journey of planning, execution, and even after the event, mm -hmm. I'll make sure we sit down and see what went right, what went wrong. So, walking the journey with the client has really helped me because most clients, uh, we are humans. If you yeah. pay your relation, they really want to come back again because you've given them service and relation. They feel like uh, we own your event. Yeah. What is the wildest thing that has ever happened to you in an event? Wildest, wildest. Uh, I think at the last week, mm -hmm. uh, I was on stage. Uh, I was doing my thing. Women in Mbisha had to go to my hype event, to my hype event, and then the stage. Sijina uh, niyelko me under your stage. It collapsed. Yeah. So me and my dancers. And the whole event ended. It didn't end. You have to like <laughs> pretend it was mm. part of it because uh, the clients don't know. Not the clients, but say the guest. Mm. Our ju our taki kujio of it. They are here to have a good time. And what was the feedback from the receivers of the event and 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 the owners of the event? The owners they had what to compensate they for that. Or they compensated you or the people attending? Me, because I'm the one who has fallen. But then I, I, of course, I continued. After we fell, we see Mamad to Kajifanya. We continued with the party because mm -hmm. the stage fell on one side. Mm -hmm. uh, so we continued. We went to the crowd, blah, 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 did our thing. But then after the event, I had to talk to the organizers mm -hmm. who had done that because, I mean, I was almost hurt. Yeah. yeah. What are you, uh, who are the biggest networks that you made since you started? And uh, you're saying you started last year. Yes. Who are some of the, uh, you could give them credit and say they played a big part. Yes. They've been uh, mentors to yes. you. And then there's also still your networks and your allies, and you depend on them. Yes. Uh, I would say, first of all, Dr. Fueneke. He's been mentoring me. He's even give, given me some gigs here and there. Also, he sounds a guy called Eds, an amazing, amazing guy, and epic, epic events. A big shout out to you. All right. Lastly, um, tell people if they want to hire you. Uh, do you have a red card? I don't know. You can tell them. Uh, how much do you charge from a birthday to a dinner to a funeral? A funeral is an event, please. It is an event. Yes. A wedding. Uh, you mentioned of uh, corporate dinners, etc. This is your camera. Right. Um, so if you want to hire Mush Events Limited, feel free. We are on all social media platforms at Mush Events Limited, anywhere and everywhere. Twitter, IG, TikTok. You can find us at Mush Events Limited. Um, if you want to hire us, kindly contact us on those social media platforms. Uh, the rate cards for MCing are 30 to 100 Gs, depending on the magnitude of the event. The rate cards for sound depends on what you as a client want. But we are client friendly. Please hire us for your next event, be it a wedding, be it a rural show, be it a corporate dinner, be it a luncheon, be it team building. We also do team building for corporate, for corporate. so please. Where your guys for any of your next event. And let me ask you, brother, where do you get the money to do all this? Because I, I, you didn't just come from heaven and yes. it all happened. Yes. Where did you get your first capital to set it up? Well, like I told you, I, I make money while investing into the business. I'm talking about the first inception of yes. the first event. Where did you get the money to hire? And to and to yeah. hire? Yes. To hire? See, I had money. I had money on me. Oh, I you had, had like money savings. Yes, yeah, from had, savings. Yes, 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 that's yes, the yes, answer. <laughs> See, yeah. I had savings. Yes, I had savings. Yeah. I had like 50 G's savings. Okay. So, uh, the, so the first events I was hiring with my savings, and then now I returned it to the business after the business made money. Okay. Yes. That's really perfect. Actually, that's a good lesson. Like before you start a business, you must have savings. Uh, there's people who go to the bank to borrow loans, which is also a good thing because actually they encourage people to borrow loans to start a business. But they're also massively discouraged, which is not, I don't know, 
if you've tried it, tell us at the comment section. But thank you for coming and sharing your experience in that space. I'm pretty sure people have learned a lot from this conversation. Thank you so much for having me. All right, and we end it here. Thank you so much for watching from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We definitely see you next time right here. And I'm Sako, and have a fantastic one. See you next time.